Tyler Simmons. I have noticed that most of the religious people I've met are fairly tolerant. But I don't judge a belief or ideology by the people who practice it. If someone says they are tolerant yet believe in eternal torment and hellfire or eternal destruction, that person is not tolerant despite their friendly demeanor. If a person believes in hell, they are automatically intolerant and support torturing people who don't agree with their agenda, even though they themselves would never torture someone else. Also, there is this idea of thought crimes. When I was a Christian, I felt this intense pressure to obsessively police my thoughts for sin. It was miserable because I felt no matter how hard I tried to meet those standards, I could never reach them. This caused me so much anxiety because I felt I was always doing it wrong. It was through all this I concluded that to believe in hell makes a person intolerant. Am I justified in thinking that because I've experienced this exact thing? Hey, Tyler, thanks for the question. You know, it would be really easy for me to just say, yes, absolutely, you're, you're dead on. They're all just a bunch of intolerant bastards and, and whatever. But I'm not going to say that at all because I don't, I don't think that's true. And I don't think your logic on this is, is, is reasonable or, or, uh, or makes a lot of uh, a rational uh, conclusion based on the data at hand. Let me explain why. Um, from, what, from my own experience, and you yourself have experienced people who um, are Christians who have a tolerant attitude towards beliefs or ideas that are in contradiction to theirs. And it is okay to judge people by their actions because at the end of the day, that's all you really can judge them by anyway. You, you, no one, none of us are, are, are peering into each other's heads and seeing what's actually there. We can make suppositions about it. We can make educated guesses about it. We can ask people, what are you thinking? And maybe they'll tell you the truth. <laughs> and maybe they won't. But actions speak louder than words. Actions also speak louder than belief. So I want to put a plug in there that if somebody's acting tolerant and, and saying tolerant like words and, and is willing to live a life of acceptance and mutual cooperation and benefit, between people of differing religious or political beliefs, that's a plus. It's not a minus, okay? That is a pro. That's not a con. It's a benefit, not um, – it's a feature, not a bug, okay? So uh, that's kind of what we want because you can't – because you mentioned thought policing. And this is – this kind of can go over into thought policing from the other angle or from the other side. And I don't think you want that, and I, I'm sure I don't. Um, because thought policing is rough. I believe me, I understand exactly how that feels. I lived under that myself, under Scientology, constantly policing our beliefs. And Hubbard actually talked in a few places about what an excellent and amazing control mechanism that is and how organized religion now and in the past has used that to um, keep people in line. Um, and that's actually where can this kind of goes. It's a matter of keeping people in line. You say that it's, um, or you're thinking that this is a, a, a sort of mode of intolerance. Um, I, and I don't really, I, I, I can see how you could see it that way, okay? I'm not trying to say that, you know, that you're out to lunch or coming from Mars. But let's look at it this way. We all, in a society, have crime, and then we have punishment. If you commit the crime, there's a very good chance you're going to be punished for it. And we all agree that that is how things should be. That's a, in fact, that for, all, for most everybody, except criminals, is a fairly logical sequence of events. You do a bad thing, there's going to be punishment for it. We are, I mean, I guess you could say we're intolerant of criminals, but really, that's not, that's not really what the basis of a good prison or reform or rehabilitation system is really all about. Unfortunately, in the United States, and I can go on about this for a really long time, and I'm going to not do that right now, um, our criminal justice system is not about reform or rehabilitation. It is, it is a slave-making system, and it's used that way. And the private prison system is, is nothing but disgusting levels of, of profit on top of that. Um, so I've got, all, you know, I've got all kinds of problems with that. But if you look at a European model or other models around the world, you see that prisons don't have to be that. Prisons can be reforming or rehabilitative places to go, and a person can get actual the actual help they need to stop being a criminal. And at the end of the day, that's pretty much what we should want from a justice system. So, 
Okay, so I make that point. Now, getting back to the crime and punishment thing, um, I don't look at that as a matter of tolerance, right? It's a more a matter, and I don't think most Christians do either. I think they look at it more as, look, if you sin against the rules or or guidelines or whatever the test, you know, commandments of God, there are going to be consequences to that. I, as a, you know, let's say I'm a Christian, I, I, as a Christian, am not going to carry out those consequences on you. God will, you know, after you're dead. Um, and that's a shame. That's a bummer. I really, you know, I'm kind of bummed about that. You don't believe in him or you're going to, you're going to eat shellfish or you're going to do this or that or whatever it is, whatever sin it is you're going to commit. Um, you know, that's a, that's just an unfortunate circumstance of, uh, or consequence of what you're doing. That's not an intolerant attitude. Do you see what I mean? You know, it's just more a matter of, well, you're, you know, this is the situation and this is the consequence of that situation. They can still like you as a person. They can still get along with you. They can still be tolerant of the fact that you have opposing or or contradictory or different beliefs than they do. They can still, you know, participate in sports with you. They can still work with you. They can still go to school with you. They can, you know, there's there's all kinds. They can go sailing with you and, and not... That doesn't have to be a big thing between you. If that person's not not making it a big thing, you don't have to make it a big thing. And so there you go. You just have different ideas about what happens when you die. Well, neither one of you are going to know which one of you is right until you die. So making a big thing out of it in the here and now, in our life now, is kind of silly, isn't it? You know, I mean, I, I kind of think it is. And I don't, you know, as this, as you go now, admittedly, as you go down the spectrum of extremism uh, toward deeper and deeper fundamental belief systems, uh, more literal belief systems, more more controlling belief systems, then that tolerance starts waning, and you get an intolerance for sure. Okay, so uh, so I have to talk about this, I guess, on a spectrum um, because you know maybe sometimes. I think most of the time, it's not true that you're dealing with intolerant people, but at the at the fringes and the ends, you're going to have intolerance, of course, um, because that's kind of what it means to be on the ends is that, you know, it's my way or the highway. And that goes both ways. You know, it always does. Always does. So anyway, um, that's some thoughts on that. I don't know. Maybe you want to think about it. Maybe you want to ask me more about it. But um, those are some of my initial thoughts on that, and I hope that... I hope that helps.